All right, welcome back to Around Town with uh, Russ, Leah, myself, Lee Lakin, and uh, we have all your Holton highlights. We're glad to be back after a uh, two-week hiatus that we were on over Christmas and New Year's. Happy New Year's and, and uh, Merry Christmas to everybody out there. I hope you had a great time. And uh, yeah, our great Lucy Goosey show about uh, everything that's going on in Halton Hills and the Halton region. Uh, don't mind Big Daddy, we just kind of caught some news about uh, the Halton police chief traveling to Florida. We're going to try and keep an eye on that and find out what was going on That's there. That's news to me. I, yeah, uh, I, we just kind of caught that news that uh, uh, our own Halton police chief had traveled to Florida. He is on his way home. He is deeply sorry and apologetic. But to me, I think it's a little past that point. Uh, better to ask for forgiveness and permission, I guess it is. But welcome to the show, everybody. We are glad to be back here and presenting a... I so look forward for the next 30 minutes to talking to you about COVID. I've been so looking forward to it. <laughs> but it's I, nice to be back. I, 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 some, I somehow take your sarcasm there a little bit. But, I'm uh, always sarcastic, you know. We are broadcasting today from Max Tires at 61 Guelph Street in Georgetown. And... Uh, not just Max Tires, uh, they do all kinds of stuff. They do transmissions, brakes, uh, all that good stuff. Uh, and like I said, there's 61 uh, Guelph Street here in Georgetown. But we are also in the location of um, Easy, Easy Taxi, Taxi, who is our sponsor today. Yeah. Give them a call today, Easy Taxi, at 873-9900. Nice, simple number to Maybe remember. give it about an hour until they quiet down, because yeah. they're absolutely crazy right now. I'm just going to kind of pan up yeah. to yeah. the Max Tires. Yeah, go ahead. Bear with me here. Yeah. There we go. There we are, Max Tires. And we're on location right here. Yes, we uh, we're live on location. Again, Russ and I are in the same bubble. Uh, we work together, so this is hence the no masks. No masks. And yes. uh, Leah's wearing her mask over there. I have mine on. on. <laughs> Absolutely. Sure. And, uh, but again, like I say, we've been brought to you by Easy Taxi. And we should actually mention that right, I guess, right off the top that uh, unfortunately we've lost a long time taxi company here in town. Well, we don't know yet. Well, uh, we don't know. They, 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 uh, yeah. At the moment, McCab Taxi is closed. Yeah, uh, for and, two uh, weeks, uh, they, uh, they're saying. Of course, so. McCab Taxi has been a big part of Halton Hills for generations. Yeah, big time. And uh, many of, we have many friends work there. You and I work there. Uh, yeah. We work at Easy, but we work there as well. And the John McKee and the gang, uh, uh, well, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, but at the moment, Easy Taxi is uh, pretty much your your number one call in town, <laughs> and, and uh, they're very busy. Yeah, and, they're uh, very. You busy. have to understand. Give them, you know, give us some time. And they hired new drivers at Easy. Um, yeah, we got three because new drivers. Because of course, when a large company like McCab stops working every day, where are those customers going to go? And they had a large customer following but uh, at the moment they're closed we don't know if they're opening again soon we hear this rumor that rumor. we're not sure but we're sorry uh, but, but of course it happened uh, because they were a huge part of the community for yeah, so many big years time. And, and yeah. just it's just sad to see another business go go under yeah you know it, it's really it, we're seeing so many places go under and uh, you know it's it's tragic that uh, COVID's taken this kind of toll on, on businesses in a toll on the businesses in this area. So, uh, yeah, but once again, brought to you by Easy Taxi. So they're the one to call right now at 905-873-9900. Very simple to easy and, to remember. And the news is brought to you by Max Tires and Auto Repairs. And they're 905-873-9255. And Sean, uh, we're just talking to Rob here, who uh, Sean and Rob own this whole thing. Um, easy uh Fred's tires. Fred's towing. Fred's towing. I got my Fred's towing cap on. Um, they were just telling us they're, they're extremely busy. Yeah, yeah, um, very busy. Uh, the, and the tire shop, big sale on tires. Big sale on snow tires. And the again, best deal in town. We remind you, please make an appointment. Uh, you can walk in, absolutely, but. Uh, I think you'll get a, a lot more done with an appointment. Uh, yeah, you know. give us a call yeah. first before you come Definitely. in. Definitely. And it's a beautiful showroom here in Mac yep. Tires. Yep. It really is. A great little showroom. Uh, nice and bright. You see the couch over there where the customers sit. Where yep. You know, no more sitting on little wooden benches while you're waiting for your car. Now you can listen to our radio station or watch TV. And we and, even uh, have... There you go. Of course, we have uh, us up top there as well. And uh, while well, these are the main headlines from today, as we just get started... Uh, 92 new cases reported in home today and doug ford has a message for us stay home 
and he's talking about extreme measures like overnight lockdowns, yeah. Um, yeah. curfews, curfews, yeah, uh, so on and so forth. Thirty-six in Burlington, thirty-three in Oakville, twenty-two in Milton, and just one here in Halton Hills. But one is too many. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And uh, unfortunately, Chartwell Brant Health Center has had their first death in Burlington. They are a long-term care home, and we talk about the long-term care homes because many people here in Halton Hills have relatives in these oh, homes. Yeah. Lots, of, lots of them. There's not just you know extended care, and we have the uh, Mountain View residents and the Bennett Center here, but there's a lot more uh, elderly people from this area that are in these homes. So that's why. At 645 confirmed so far total in Halton Hills of wow. COVID. Wow, that's way too many. Yeah. Like that's wow, that's a lot higher than I thought. 574 have recovered, of course, but 67 active at the moment, 67 right now. And uh, another outage at Kojiko. Kojiko, twice this week. Poor buggers. Yeah. I mean, uh, they're, they're, they're trying really to, it's, it's no one's fault. It's a utility, things go down, but yeah. right now we are really relying on Kojiko, but uh, let's hope that they get things fixed and whatever the problem is. I haven't noticed anything myself, it must be early in the morning. When I, I think it, it, it's it when was. all the students are getting online and trying to get online and do the online Maybe they're learning, over, right? Well, you got to remember now, we've also gone from being off on holidays to all of a sudden, now you have the impact of all of the schools. Yeah. yeah. That, and, that, and they were down yeah. because of yeah. that as well. So you know they're running. And you got to remember, well. there's That's more connections lot. going on right well, now. Well, exactly. There's Everybody's home. Yeah. And, it, you yeah. know, if, you're, if your internet's even just slow, it's going to be just because the amount of usage that's going to go on over the next couple of weeks. Um, I'm just going to cut you off there because that, that actually uh, blends into this story. Blaming the rise of COVID numbers in the province, uh, Dr. David Williams, Ontario's Chief Medical Officer, stated that schools will not open for in-person learning for at least another couple of weeks. So this could be an issue for Kojiko over the next couple of weeks, you know, people that are using it. It's a tough one for everybody, Williams mentioned in a news conference held on Thursday afternoon and three residents uh, 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 Thursday afternoon. And uh, he stated that, yes, we will be looking at the end of January before kids will be back in class learning. Uh, well, and, let's and keep that, them safe. You know? and, well, that's it. And, and, you know, we learned, I think, from sending them back in September that we started to see an increase in COVID numbers and, you know, when they went back to school. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, Dr. Williams is, is stating that right now we're looking till the end of September or the end of January and uh i just hope the the internet providers can keep it going you know because it's well you can't really be, uh, blame kojiko I oh mean, no, it's, no. It, it's a utility and uh, things happen and, and uh, like i say they, they probably got overloaded they'll, they'll fix the problem but uh it is a pain in the rear end when you're trying to do your schoolwork or do your work from home and you can't because yeah. You know, it's time to go watch Leave It to Beaver. You know what I mean? That's what Big Daddy really do. dating yourself, man. I know. I know. <laughs> this is a good show. I'll date myself. <laughs> I, I would have said WKRP. I would have dated Well, that too. <laughs> <laughs> that too. Uh, it was a great show. Yeah. Anyway, um, showing back. And Tommy Lasorda died. Yeah. I can't believe that. Um, great baseball manager. But uh, uh, the one thing I did want to say was that uh, Halton Region has sent a message to Premier Ford, by the way. Uh, a bunch of regional councillors got together uh, backing small business and uh, wanting Ford and the Ontario uh, government to change a few regulations to make it a little bit more even fairground, uh, playground for, uh, um, for small business. Uh, because our small businesses are across the country right now are, are, are suffering. suffering. All of them are. Uh, it's, 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 again, it's a sad state when you're seeing big corporations like Walmart and, and Home Depot and stuff like that, that, uh, you know, are making money yet, you know, smaller places like the home hardwares and the little hardware shops and the, you know, the little shops downtown are, are struggling and struggling. And, um, you know, if they go get this, um, uh, what do you want to call it? Financial, you know, package that the government's putting out there for them. How's that going to affect their taxes next year and all well, kinds and of stuff? Well, and some of them have to be a certain amount paid back too. Exactly. So, so it's you not know, like it's, it's all free money either. It, it's the whole situation is just it, freaky. It's just so freaky, and it's very, yeah, because there's no answers, and I think that's part of why people are getting upset is because there's no an real direct answer. Well, like we say every week, we've never been through this before. No, we've yeah, you know, we're going into different stages now, and now there's the second wave is bigger than the first wave. 
and uh, you know it's, uh, it's sec the second wave is uh, overtaken it has. the first wave. Yeah, it really has. And, uh, but nobody ever has ever mentioned: is there a third wave? Well, is there I, a third I think, wave? I, I, I don't there, want a third wave. I think everybody's afraid to, to talk about it yeah. because you know after the first wave, everybody got talking about the second wave, and then sure enough, it hit and kicked everybody right in the you know. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't <laughs> believe the numbers. The numbers are through the roof. Absolutely. I remember oh. we were talking about uh, 50 or 60 cases in Ontario a day, and now you're talking about 4,000. Now, some of that, too, is, is that they're also doing more testing every day. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, okay, the numbers are going up, but we're, we're getting more numbers immediately because they're doing so much more testing now. Um, it's, 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 yeah, again, I, I don't see this going anywhere anytime soon, unfortunately. So. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you were mentioning earlier, uh, remote learning started on Monday as the kids returned to class virtually across the province, but there are some exceptions uh, that uh, will allow for in-person learning as well as depending on the situation as well. Now, that's a good idea. The Halton District School Board is still flagging new coronavirus cases, but in reaction to the province-wide lockdown and elementary schools uh, switching to virtual learning, Halton has teamed up with the Ministry of Education and certain local daycares uh, uh, to provide emergency child care at no cost, yeah. okay? And which is a good idea because uh, child care costs a, a bundle, absolutely. And you've and got these frontline workers right. doing, you know, doing this stuff, so yeah. it, it, it just makes sense yeah. to me. And uh, the spaces will be full day and available for eligible health care and frontline workers with children age 4 to 12 who are registered for school in Halton. And the kids, uh, of course, as you mentioned, will be staying home for another couple of weeks. Yeah. And uh, we're live at Max Tire. This is Halton Hills Online Radio and TV. I guess you can call us TV or Pretty video. Much. What do you call it now? Pretty TV? much. A lot of people watch TV online now. So, yes, uh, you know, it's the way they're doing it. We are starting a YouTube channel, by the way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're starting a YouTube channel in the next couple of weeks uh, where we can put all of this stuff because we have to organize. We've got so many videos now uh, coming and going and uh, so many different things that we talk about uh we're, we're having to put together a youtube channel on the tv just know? to be able to do it now jumping into a, a bit of a sad story we had a halton regional police officer uh well known very well liked in the community detective constable michael tidball who has been with the halton police force since 2007 he passed away suddenly monday morning as a result of an acute medical episode uh police stated in a news release it wasn't covid related uh, they, they commented, it's with great shock and sadness that we share with you. One of our veteran officers passed suddenly this morning while conducting an investigation. And as a result of acute medical episode, the statement was made. Tidball was a valued and well-loved member of the Halton Regional Police Services, having served a variety of investigative and frontline patrol roles, police also said in their statement. And uh, yeah, just very sad uh, yeah, to, uh, yeah. to see that happen. Yeah. And uh, you know, these people keep us safe on the roads every day. Yeah. yeah, we don't like to be pulled over, but they're doing their job and that's what they're doing. You and I know most of the police are We know they're most of them, crew. yeah. They're a good bunch of guys yeah. and gals. And, and gals. yes, absolutely. they're a great crew. And uh, we're very fortunate that uh, we have them here in Halton Region, so. Now, a lot of uh, talk about the Bennett Center is what is going on there now. Well, the Bennett Center uh, mentioned that a staff member who tested positive for COVID-19 is recovering at home. And as of last Tuesday, no residents have tested positive for COVID-19. Halton Regional Public Health confirmed the test from the swab taken on December 28th. And it declared an outbreak. Uh, and the region actually declares an outbreak, I guess, at a hospital when there's only one. But yeah, yeah. And, uh, now a statement put out by the Bennett Center said it is continuing to follow public health directives, including screening of residents and staff twice a day, but uh, there's no breakout, I guess, at the moment. Got, there, got to be challenging in the in the nursing homes and the long term care homes and stuff. You know, you hear these ones in Toronto where they've got like 50 cases in a in a nursing home. That's just uh, absolutely incredible. You know, it blows my mind. Uh, another uh, uh, local person passing away as we flip over in some other news, uh, non-COVID related, uh, on sad news over Christmas. And uh, I knew, I've known this lady for 30 odd years. Uh, they were a very close family member uh, to the Ash family. We send out all our love, respect, condolences. Uh, fire, res uh, fire department responded to a call on 46 Cobble Hill in, in Acton. Uh, the house was filled with heavy, heavy black smoke. 
Um, there was one fatality with one occupant with burns and smoke inhalation and the investigation by the Ontario Fire Marshal identified the cause was an accidental failure to a Christmas tree lighting system, which is, we've heard of that many of those over the years, yeah. that's for sure. Be careful uh, with your Christmas lights, folks. Yeah. Uh, fire and explosion investigator noted that the public fire safety message that is important in this case is to ensure your Christmas tree is kept watered. Exactly. That's yeah. what people forget to do. They yeah. forget that. Or the dog goes in there and drinks it. Exactly. I've seen dogs do that and they, they don't think to go water it because they, oh, I watered it yesterday, but the dog went in there and drank all or the cat or whatever. <laughs> Um, so yeah, they have a message going out to you. Please keep your Christmas trees watered for the people that are keeping them up. Um, cause some people are keeping them up while COVID's going on. They're kind of doing the, uh, the Halton Hills lighting thing. That's that what we I was going to say. That yeah, brings us to you know, what the nah. leaders put out there. Yeah. Now tell us, tell us a little bit about what, uh, you put it up. You go ahead and tell us what, what Rick Bennett's message was on Facebook today that we posted. Um, well, just that he, what they want to do is they've got, uh, light up the hills. They've got the Georgetown Christmas lights. They're gonna keep them going till January, just as a kind of community unity um, and a way of giving everybody hope and to try and stay positive by look, at least having visuals that are nice, yeah. beautiful, positive images. And they want everybody to please leave your lights on for the month of January and uh, yeah, light the place up. I have an idea that would, uh, why can't we leave the lights on until COVID goes away? Well, well, that, that might be it, something we can start. Maybe you know that's I mean? something we, we can, can work start. on. That. <laughs> you know, when you're driving around at night, it, it's it's a nice, cozy feeling to it, see the lights up there. It, it is very and, cool, and it it's is. you know, and active as well. And, you know, Glen Williams, you know, Glen Williams, on. even Limehouse has got a little display hills. going on. And, uh, and the, uh, the the Acton BIA did a nice job on that little park on the corner of Main and Mill yeah. there. You know, that looks pretty cool. Too, I think so. maybe Marcel uh, might have his arm twisted, keeping his lights on. It'd be nice. Yeah, I'm uh, sure. Right at the corner of Samuel and Argyle, folks, if you haven't seen it. Has he taken it down yet? I haven't been up that way to see it. Yeah. So, but with this going on, you can bet your bottom dollar that if he's got them still up, Marcel would be the first one to have them. You remember in the old days when we were younger, we used to go up on in normal of Winston Churchill up on the top. That there. little side street yeah. there, yeah. They used yeah. to have a competition there. Oh yeah, they still do. They, they still, still do, do it. it. Yeah. They still do it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I used to take my kids out, get load them in the car, you know, and we'd take them up there and hit that one and hit the one up on Jocelyn Crescent and, you know. Johnson, Johnson. Or Johnson. Yeah, yeah that's uh, awesome too. You know, right? they do a great job. And, and again, this might be something for the community to do is, uh, you know, leave your lights on until COVID stops. Actually, you know, yeah. there, there's a thought that I just made me think of, you know, when I was, I was living up north, um, in Lindsay, but outside of Lindsay, they had an area where the whole street, it was huge houses and they were lit right up. They had a wooden bin created on the Crescent to donate to the food bank. Oh, so cool. when you drove yeah. through, you did make, put your donations in and every night they would go out and collect them. Yeah. Um, but everybody Mar Mar lit up. Doesn't Marcel donate to cash? He does. And uh, the one on Johnson, they donate to somebody. Yeah. Sure. The Georgetown Hospital. I think so. I think so. I think so, yeah. so, yeah. so that's it's a all lot. going into the community kitty, right? Especially yeah. right now because the food banks too are, are they're having a really hard time because there's more people needing it now. Oh, big time. Than there was. Yeah. So I mean for anybody who's got their lights up and if you've got a, an organization where you can do it on your crescent or, or somewhere in a small area where all your houses can be lit up, yeah. something really spectacular, put it out there. We'll even put it out for you. I'm hearing yeah. something we'll help you. you. I'm hearing something in my earpiece. Oh. Oh, it's, it's just actually Rick Bennett, the mayor, saying that he's going to soon be seen in some Halton Hills online attire. Absolutely. A t-shirt, Rick? Yeah. Yes. You, you want a t-shirt? A hat? And a hat? Okay, Rick. And yeah, you'll take your picture? Wonderful. Thank you. And you enjoy the radio. Talk about putting them on the spot now. All right. So there's our uh, wife <laughs> in there. Sorry you couldn't hear Rick, but I did. And, uh, <laughs> we always hear voices too, so that's just something normal. That's another story. That's why I stand over here when you two are over there. Yeah. <laughs> Three residents at Extendicare Hall in Hills and one resident at Wyndham Manor in Oakville have died this last week from COVID-19. Death numbers in the two facilities as of the middle of last week were 14 and 21. Wow. Uh, a new outbreak has also been declared at Sunrise Senior Living Retirement Home in Oakville. And uh, hospitalizations also continue to go up in our local uh, hospitals in Halton. They rose to 96.4% while ICU occupancy went up to 94.6% earlier in the week. So, uh, yeah, you know, like I said, it, it's, it's fun coming back. 
to uh, uh, to talk to you guys every thirty uh, for thirty minutes about COVID. Isn't it? Fun? It's just it's. it's a, I can't wait. It, it makes my day. I can't wait for a show where we don't have to talk about this and we can I, talk about the others. I seriously cannot wait for that. I'm at that point now where <laughs> you know what? It's, it's just COVID. Let's get it over with. But. We still got a lot of vaccines coming out. Um, you know, I saw today on uh, some other news sources that uh, um, we're still going to be a while before we really get all these vaccines to everybody. They're, they're well, it takes a long time to uh, inject a herd as yeah, large as pretty, Canada, pretty you know? much. And uh, yeah. uh, I heard uh, uh, Prime Minister Trudeau talking that per capita we are actually getting more vaccines than any other country in the world right now. Mm -hmm. So. Um, you know, that's a, that's a, on the positive side then, you know, yeah. we're starting to hit that positive side. Something else, a uh, 2012 study from Ontario Farmland Trust decided Halton region is not able to grow sufficient food on its existing agricultural land base um, to meet the foods of the citizens of the community. So we haven't got enough uh, land to, to produce for our people. Well, no, they keep building houses. Yeah, they, and they, if they, they leave the farmland alone, we might be able to do that. Pretty much. This is where I was kind of going with that one. Uh, this vulnerability <laughs> will only compound over time, given the population growth projections and availability of land. So uh, we start stacking and packing houses in, then where are the where's the corn going to grow? Where's the wheat going to grow? Where's the cows going to you know do their thing? Um, this has been an, an ongoing issue in Halton for quite some time, and this study is from 2012. This study is like eight years old. Well, we're losing Allison's, uh, for one. That well, was you know, my first I, thought when he I, was talking I, about you that. You know, a massive farming uh, family here in, in, in uh, Halton Hills, and uh, you know, they're they're disappearing as well and and we have subdivisions here and there yeah apparently yeah. they're oh. still going to be selling corn but it's not going to be like where it was well that's it it's so. all going to change and i mean we all pretty much grew up i mean like we all grew up i'd say I do to Alice. this day it's like whatever they do to their corn it's fabulous i, I always eat it's, allison's corn oh when it comes up that's where i live i'll make meals out of just corn <laughs> I love corn. <laughs> Once again, I want to remind you, we're broadcasting live from Max Tires at 61 Guelph well Street here in Georgetown, home of Easy Taxi, right across the street from Fred's Towing as well. Um, you know, got my Fred's hat on. Got, got your Fred's my hat friend, on. Yeah, yeah. Towing. Uh, Since 1958. <laughs> you know, the number one song was when Fred's Towing went on the air? When, when, when they went into business? Blows my Great mind. Balls of Fire by Jerry Lee Lewis. Lewis. I looked it up. Yeah, that's how old, that's how long fire. Fred's towing has been around. And again, uh, who hasn't been pulled out of a ditch from Fred's towing? I, and if you're wondering what the noise is from over there, yeah. you can tell them. Yeah, the noise from over there is dispatch from Easy Taxi. Of course, our sponsor for today. You can give them a call at 905-873-9900. And uh, yeah, they're dispatching a ton of cabs today. Uh, they're very busy, so make sure you give them some time. Uh, if you're calling for a cab, and we also remind you, please do not drink and drive. <laughs> Very key element. But uh, but yeah, as you can tell, we're uh, we're live here, and uh, part of the reason we are here is this is where we work out. This is part of our bubble, so we're okay. Yeah. Um, otherwise, you know, we'd be in a, a bit of doo doo. Yeah. Uh, you know, for uh, for being out and about because we do want people to stay at home. Um, we're trying to get people to stop going out. This is kind of why we're doing these videos, but at the same time, we got, we do respect people have to get out. You got to go get groceries. You got to, you know, uh, get One to thing I don't understand about this overnight curfew that might come into uh, B, and that is, does that mean that, uh, like, no one is allowed out, even people with, uh, uh, that, that work? Uh, Night shifts and stuff like that. But uh, essential work. services, does that mean that people that work, like even at essential services, won't be allowed out? Or, or yeah, other than working, see, yeah, it's the, very the bottom, shady, right? The bottom line is, for the most part, is that if you work, you go to your work, you come home, but I think we're supposed to just stay within your home bubble. Whoever you live with is who you are supposed to be with. Nothing outside of that right now. Okay. I mean, yeah. I didn't understand that. Well, yeah. this is it, too. That's the long and short of it. I, I'm sure there's a little bit of this and that in different areas but that's well, the long this is some of it too is is that some of the stuff that they've laid out has been very vague i think i don't think they have any like certain guidelines that they can actually just put on a form and go 
you know, it, it's weird because you see some people that are, you know, doing this and you hear that they're not supposed to. But Real estate. Yeah. Well, there's a prime example right there. Here we go, people. You can't go into a store or you can't go do this and you can't do that. But why are these people coming through your home that you don't know from a town that you don't know where they're from? Yeah, you're showing these houses, and whether you're a rental or... I never or, thought about that. Yeah. I never thought about it. Sorry I'm losing my voice today, but uh, I never thought about that. That's yeah. true. You've got people coming in from who knows where. They could be Mississauga. It could be uh, Yorkdale. Who knows? And they're coming into your home and walking around your home and touching your doorknobs. And, and who knows? Maybe even using your bathroom and stuff like that. This should not be going on Here's another, at all. Here's another thought. When you go grocery shopping... Go by yourself. Yeah. Don't take your kids with you. Your mother-in-law, your yeah. wife. Yeah. Go yeah. by yourself. One person can do it. All. I still see it going on today. Everywhere we go, when you see, I would have Walmart or Superstore or the big box I mean, stores. It's not even to prevent the illness. You've got to understand. People are standing in line sometimes, and if it's minus two, minus three degrees out, not including the wind chill, and you're standing in line. Now it hasn't been too bad, but there are times. So. Respect and consider others. You yeah. know that they're not going to have to stand out there because they're counting who's going in and who's going out before they're going to let you in. Exactly. Right. And and it just it boggles my mind. I agree with you, Big Daddy, on that one because it, it, it. Why are you taking three people in the store with you? There's no reason. There's for no it. reason for that whatsoever. I, I just don't get it. And, Normalcy, uh, I guess. <laughs> well, you know, people don't think though. I guess they just don't think about it. But when, think about it. You know, I guess you only need. One person to go shopping, shopping. so yeah, or any of the shopping, you know, wherever you go. Um, here's some good news. Uh, this is cool, I like this. Yeah. Halton has donated one of its decommissioned ambulances to the Kenora Chiefs Advisory, so we're helping other areas too. Yeah, uh, region officials mentioned the ambulance will be used to support COVID 19 assessment and testing in First Nations communities up in northwestern Ontario. Which no, is that's very good. cool. And Halton is proud to donate this vehicle to the Kenora Chiefs Advisory to support them in the response for the COVID-19 pandemic. We mentioned Regional Chair Gary Carr. This ambulance will help meet the needs of the Kenora area, First Nations communities through mobile uh, COVID-19 assessment and testing. So it really helps in Northwestern Ontario. Congratulations to the Halton gang for shipping up the ambulance. And what about our first baby of 2021? That's right. Uh, some good news for change is the first child of Emma Cato and Christopher Marantetz made an early arrival with mom and dad January 6th to become Georgetown Hospital's first baby of 2021. And it's it, she says, uh, meaning the labor, <laughs> right? came right out of the blue and it was the quickest delivery of anyone in my family, she says. Uh, that's mom, Emma. Uh, we're both doing good, and the father is okay, too. The father's okay, too, right. <laughs> Weighing in at seven pounds, seven ounces, Griffin made his grand entry into the world at 4.59 a.m. that morning. Welcome to your new hometown, Griffin. Welcome to there Georgetown, Halton Hills. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, that's we a only great, got a few minutes. That's a great news story. Uh, the one thing I want to touch on before we go, we touched on it near the top of the hour, and we are going to be talking about this next week, is uh, Chief... Police Chief, Halton Police Chief Stephen Tanner had taken a vacation or a trip to uh, deal with some issues down in Florida. Uh, big no-no. Big, big, big no-no. And uh, we're seeing so many of these people, uh, politicians, uh, all these people that are traveling. I don't understand why the airports are not closed. What is the problem with these people? Why is... <laughs> Well, they announced today how much they're, the, the, of course, they're one of the main ones that are suffering right now from sure. all of this. Um, so. Can we quickly mention JV Clothing? We have a giveaway coming up next week. Yeah. Uh, yes. And we're going to try and turn it into a daily And thing. Symposium. We, we still and, have that. And symposium, we have of course. To give her. And uh, uh, we're going to be giving away uh, hats and dinners, all kinds of stuff. Uh, we're putting all this stuff together and it will be on the air on the radio side. We'll be... Actually, it'll be on the radio side. You'll be hearing the song, and you'll be asked to post on one of our Facebook groups. So, for, so watch for that post. Press. Yeah, so you got to watch for those posts on Halton Hills Online and on Facebook, and, uh, and and keep an eye out for that, because uh, we are going to be doing a lot of giveaways over the next couple of weeks and a couple of months, and thanks to JV right. Clothing, John and the crew over there are doing a great job. They've done all of our hats and our, our nice shirts and stuff. So Great people to work with. Yeah, and... Uh, 
you could win yourself some cool swag. Hey, did you hear about our Easy Taxi Holton Hills Online uh, shirts and hats? I've heard, to? I've heard. They'll absolutely. be around the next two or three weeks. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you'll see our staff at Easy Taxi uh, wearing proudly either a hat or a toque or a shirt. And uh, we're going to try and get these Fred's Towing hats inside the cabs on the dash. Don't you think that would be a great idea? Oh, because yeah. we're one big family here. Max Tires, of course. Tell them about Max Tires, our sponsor. We, we okay. love our Max Tires. You normally do that. Max Tires and Auto Repairs, not just tires, but they do all kinds of stuff. Brakes, you got a tranny problem, bring it to the guys here. They do pretty much anything on your car. Uh, we do recommend that you call for an appointment as they are pretty busy with the COVID going on. You can call them at 905-873-9255. Book your appointment today. Also, don't drink and drive. Call our good friends at Easy Taxi at 905-873-9900. And again, McCab Taxi has closed. For two weeks is what we hear. Well, we don't know what's going on with that, but uh, as of the moment, uh, you have to give Easy Taxi staff a little bit of room <laughs> because they're very, very busy. Very busy. Trying to keep up with another large co taxi company. When one, you know, when you look at Easy Taxi and you look at McCab, they're two large, very large companies. Oh yeah. And when one guy goes, the other guy ends up with the whole thing. And well, that's a lot. That's a lot to take on all at once. So yeah, that's a that's a big. Uh, but we'll you know, see what happens. We'll yeah. Let you know never know what's we'll, happening. Next show, maybe we'll have some more answers on what's going on with McCab. And uh, again, John and his crew over there, uh, we wish you all the best. And Absolutely. Uh, and uh, just sad to hear another you know another business going down. It is. It so, is. myself, Big Daddy, Leah Lywood as well. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're so happy to be back. It's it, it feels good. <laughs> to be back again <laughs> and uh we love bringing you the news every single week and uh we we just hope you tune in next week for the next one so and don't forget community is driven by community you navigate and we will drive have yourself a great weekend and we'll catch everybody next week cheers <laughs>